Hi, this is Carrie Brown with Real Estate 101. And today I am at, I'm with eXp Realty. I always forget to say that. Um, I am here today with Mike Strand and Mike is out of Orange City, Newport Beach, California. Um, and he does equity exchanging. So he, um, well, Mike, you talk about what you do. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to <clears throat> describe, but I don't even know if, uh, what I do, but um but I'm uh, out of uh, Newport Beach, Southern California, Orange County, and I run Orange Coast Exchangers, which uh, is one of the oldest groups in the active groups in the nation. Started back in the early 60s, fourth generation real estate and uh, third generation, what we call creative real estate. I, I kind of rule like there's traditional real estate, which is, you know, you see it with residential and so forth like that. Um, and they only give you like a hammer in your toolbox. And what we do is we bring not only a hammer, we bring uh, everything else. So, um, so what I do is I find solutions for people. People own real estate for the, the benefits it gives them. Okay. So uh, whether it's to live in, whether it's cash flow, value added, partnership breakup, they own that kind of real estate. And this is kind of other than resident within your typical residential, okay, investment. And, um, and then uh, when they go to sell, their motivations are trying to find, uh, to get them into a better location, a better, better situation, change of circumstances. So what I try to do is match up those circumstances of what they're trying to do. And when we talk about equity marketing, uh, you know, people think of equity, okay, you have a property, this is debt, this is what the value is, and the difference is equity. And equity is always that portion of the investment that's at risk all the time. And so people think that you had traditionally, you have to list the property, sell it for cash, put the cash with an accommodator, and then uh, 1031, and then you go and you buy someone else's property. Well, in equity marketing, really that equity is a currency, if you think about it, because you're exchanging a Federal Reserve note, which is cash, for someone's equity, and you're going and exchanging it for someone else's equity. So you take that and basically shop with your equity. You're creating a currency basically with your equity. So if you have, let's say, a million dollar property and you have $500,000 debt and, and uh, you have $500,000 equity, well, you have $500,000 to shop with, right? And, uh, and you try to match that up with the needs of your client. And that's what you do. And uh, with your client, you try to understand what their objective is. And we call that counseling. Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the keys and people aren't used to it. And, and when I say counseling, it's not laying down on a sofa, kind of tell me about your life <clears throat> and all that. But it's, it's more of, um, what are your objectives? Uh, where were you born? Do you, have, do you have family? You get to know them as a person. Um, people, people have motivations and desires and people go to escrow. The property does not go to escrow. And so once you understand their objectives, then it's easier to match something with them and, and using their equity to get to that, that end goal. So that's what I do. Uh, and it very rarely you'll find a one, a, a two-way transaction where I have what you want, you have what I want. So you bring a third, fourth, fifth. My dad's done up to 287 uh, concurrent closings in five states. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it gets, it gets complicated, but you know, that's, that's the simplest form of, of what we do is equity marketing. So just to give a visual of what it's like to be in these groups with these guys right now, it's in zoom, mm -hmm. but I went to one, um, a couple in uh, Las Vegas and it was with the NCE national council of exchangers, which Mike knows all about and has been a part of and been on the board for ever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so being a newbie to it, I was like, okay, what the heck is going on here? Because you're sitting at a table that looks really similar to what's behind Mike's head. And, but it's a lot of them. And you take what you're presenting and you have a podium and you have someone that's actually, you know, 
giving you the questions, a moderator. Um, and they have behind the screen, behind your head, everything that you're presenting. And basically you pitch what your client has. And the people in the room come to you and say, or at the time they yell out numbers and somebody's taking notes for you to say whose numbers got it. And then they bring you an offer. Um, and a lot of times it's other properties wanting to swap out. Um, but I also saw where they were actually trading paper. So like insurance policies and things like that, which was way outside of the realm of anything normal real estate that I was used to, but it was so much fun. I mean, I just, I can't get over how much fun it was. I wish I had tons of stuff to present because I would just do that every day. But um, so Mike, you were talking about having, so obviously somebody was really excited to get that many offers and then to have that many trains going through to try and make all that happen. How many yeah, states? That was a, that, <clears throat> five states, that was a savings and loan. And, and back in the day when they had a lot of properties and REOs and we did what was called the REO formula at that time where a bank would take back a property that they foreclosed upon and you would have something else that needed money. You'd need a new loan and you'd approach them and say, okay, Mr. Bank, I will, um, if you make me a loan and it has to stand alone, it has to qualify, but you make me a loan on this property, I'll turn around with and, and purchase this other asset that you took in foreclosure. And so what that does to the bank is not only puts them out a new loan, it also turns a dead asset into an active asset for them too, that they put on, on, on there. But, you know, uh, you're talking about NCE. NCE goes back, uh, everything goes back to the Richard Reno days in the 50s. Um, a very creative uh, genius. And, and he would have a, a five-day seminar, Hunter Cuscard, which I've done a Meet the Masters uh, video uh, uh, with me interview. He's still around. And Bob Steele and them. And, and, and uh, they had a five-day seminar and they'd put these things on and creative and try to match it up. And um, like you said, NCE averages, uh, we have four meetings a year, about 110 to 130 people from across the country. And, uh, and we meet in the groom and, and a lot of people like yourself, they're new to the, the, the meetings and they don't feel like they have anything to present. But once they, they're there that first day, next thing you know, they have a lot to present. And, and also when you leave that meeting room and you go back to what we call our normal lives, I guess, everybody, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a relationship or a family. When you, when you get back, you also have uh, hundreds of pocket listings in a way because you've, all these are being presented. Most of them are off market and you go back to your marketplace and see if they fit but also you'll be sitting in a room like with Orange Coast, like you have behind us. We are via Zoom also now. Uh, and, uh, and you know, say, oh, someone pitched looking for something. And I'll say, you know what? I just uh, was at a meeting and that was presented and you build in a referral fee and so forth. And, and so it, it's really uh, uh, not only putting deals together, but it's also a way to, to, to start off for new people getting into this world. Um, when you talk about notes and, and not only properties, there's numerous ways you can present a property. If you own, if you own a piece of land somewhere and let's say the value is $500,000, true value is 500,000. There's not a lot of people that want a piece of land, but what if you were to create a note against it for $250,000? Now you could exchange the note. We call it activating your equity. You're, you're activating dead equity because it's dead until you activate it. And now you're, you're offering a $250,000 note that's secured by a $500,000 property. There's a lot more note takers in the room. And uh, you just got to make sure that the note structured to whatever you're acquiring with that note will service the debt in some way, or, or unless you, you negotiate that, that, you know, there's no payments on it or it balloons or something like that. Um, there's, there's all sorts of different things to, uh, <clears throat> you know, not to get too complicated, but there's insurance plays as well, where uh, for additional security on very, uh, uh, what we call hairy deals, uh, where there's a lot of, a lot of tricks in, in you know, in, in peaks and valleys and stuff that, that kind of scare investors, you know, you could, you could come in and 
and uh, add them as a beneficiary on a life policy that you have, life insurance policy you have on the principal, just to additionally secure their investment on the property and stuff. So there's all sorts of different formulas and strategies. And when we talk about strategies and formulas, when we're, when we're in escrow and we come across a, a, uh, a problem, we strategize, we brainstorm and we say, okay, we think this will work. Once we close on it, it's kind of a proven deal. So that makes it a formula. And so there's, there's numerous formulas. Formulas are now being invented with cryptocurrency, NFTs involved in real estate, the metaverse, uh, you know, metaverse, which is just mind blowing, you know, first American title and all these other escrow companies are now opening offices in this virtual world, which is just mind boggling. I had, uh, I was talking about it at Orange Coast this morning. I attend on Saturdays, another group uh, It's run by Bob Steele that's on cryptocurrencies and NFTs. And I had someone present something or ask me a question that I've never been asked before. And I've been in the business, you know, 30 some years. They wanted to trade me an NFT and some cryptocurrency, which is fine, for the digital rights to a property I own. And I said, digital rights? What are you, what are you talking about? I, I, you know, I don't know about digital. And I guess my property, all, all property in the world is digitized and duplicated in the metaverse. So she wanted to buy my digital rights in the metaverse on my property that I own in Georgia, which, yeah, I, I'm still trying to figure this whole thing out. But anyway, so she, she was going to exchange it. So bottom line is there's more formulas. Everything's coming out. Um, uh, more, more formulas, more strategies. You're never going to uh, stop learning and you're always going to try to figure out how to put deals together. So absolutely. Yeah. 19 years in the business, I, you know, you, you kind of get to where, you know, well, you do know you, you understand real estate. I mean, especially if you do a lot, I mean, I've done up to 213 houses in a year. So, you know, doing that over and over and over and over, you get to where you got a pretty good grasp on it. Walking well, you think that. about that. Think about this. Sorry to interrupt you real quick, but you think about houses, okay? And and if you have a if you're a a, a residential agent out there and you deal in homes, think about this. Uh, you know, maybe you have an older client that empty nesters. They have a two story, three thousand square foot home, and their kids are off to college now, and they don't. You know, the stairs are hard on their their joints and stuff. We all know how that feels nowadays. And, and, uh, and they, they have too many rooms and maybe they need a single story, smaller home. And let's say their house is worth $500,000 and you have another client in your office or another agent in your office that, that has a younger couple that has a, a 1500 square foot home. Maybe it's two or three bedrooms and has two kids and one more on the way and their home's worth 300,000. Well, why don't you exchange the properties? And so you say, well, they're not the same value. Well, yeah, but have them balanced by either a carry back or get a new loan on the other property and exchange the equities where the older couple ends up with the smaller home and, and vice versa. And, uh, and you, and what, what did you just do? You just got a six per com, six or 5% commission on one and a six or 5% commission on the other. You just made 12% on this whole, on this whole deal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you solve their problems. So residential, you could think out of the box. Well, it's not really out of the box in my world, but you could think in that fashion, but people don't, don't communicate like that anymore. You know, I don't think it's taught. And that's the reason why these videos are happening because it, it was never taught, you know, never, you know, let's swap this for that. I mean, we've had it happen, but not in a formal sense of now we've gone out and we sought this out to try and make this all work. Um, and it's, it's something that I think would be amazing to do and just residential real estate to, to say, okay, let's, let's just swap all this around and make it work for everybody. Um, especially in the market right now where there's just not enough on the market. We've got tons of buyers. We don't have the houses to sell. But you so, know why, so you know why too, though? It's not a, it's, I don't believe it's a total lack of, of inventory if you were to sell an investment home, now they, you just transferred the problem to you because you got the, the 45 days to name a, a replacement and, and the closing period is 180. So now you have the problem of trying to figure out where you're going to put this. 
And so yeah. people don't want to put their property out there and There's they no don't know. Too, yeah. And they don't know too, that they could take their, they could take their capital and they could put it into commercial property. They could put it into all these other deals. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities as you saw at NCE, you know, eight to 10% cash on cash return, passive, mm -hmm. uh, well-secured investments, or you could buy it. You know, there's all sorts of different things you could do. So that's, Absolutely. that's the reason why. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really does boil down to, I've got to find some place for this person in order to start the chain. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just really the market right now. So, you know, if I think if more people mention, listen, I am, we are thinking about it. We're, this is something we're considering. And then you can start the chain because somewhere in there, if you have enough, then obviously you can start swapping it all around. It can mm -hmm. be done. Oh. Um, but definitely watching you guys and what you do, um, and presenting, I mean, presenting was fun. Um, they really thought, cause I'm quiet. If I'm in a room, I'm quiet because I'm there to learn. I, I have no, I have no ego. I'm there to learn. And mm -hmm. so they really thought the moderator was gonna chew me up and spit me out. <laughs> what they didn't yeah. know is I've had a radio show for years. <laughs> and so yeah. I can talk to a wall. <laughs> right. I don't have a problem with that. Well, we call, we call them black hatters and we really, we don't talk, you know, in the olden days, uh, they used to, but nowadays, you, you know, when you go to certain meetings like NCE, we try to make it family friendly, I guess what you call it. When you go to other meetings, groups like Society of Exchange Counselors and that, you know, it's more formal, invitational only. You're, you're supposed yeah. to really know your stuff in that. But, um, but we, you know, you gotta, you gotta make it comfortable for the people to come, you know? Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And it was, they really were. He was just a quick, quick pace. I mean, he was boom, boom, boom. And I obviously for this package, which was really, really large, a lot of properties, I had researched that I had created spreadsheets. I knew actually the income better than the person that actually had them mm. because you had to in order to be able to present it. Right. And so, yeah, and I had a lot of mentorship from like Broderick J. Rowe and a lot of the guys had really taken me under their wing and said, okay, this is how you're, you're going to package this out because it was too much to do in one package. It was overwhelming, um, but it was a lot of fun. Everybody was really helpful. I think he just had a really grandiose personality hmm. and, and you're looking at a really shy, what you would think is a really shy person. <laughs> And mm -hmm. yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun because we were, we were giving each other a hard time going back and forth. So. Well, I truly yeah. believe, <clears throat> and we did this, John Weaver did this with one of my, one of my uh, people I mentored also, she used to have her license with me. Now she's full blown exchanger. And um, we tried this is, you know, most of the time people start off with the property. Where is it located? Blah, 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 blah. And instead, uh, John Weaver and I kind of worked this out. Uh, this, this it was a winery, and it was owned by a, a eighty. I think she was eighty nine years old, a little old lady, and her name was Sally. Her husband passed, and she had a house on this winery in Paso Robles. So what we did was all we did on the board is we put a picture of Sally. That's all we did, and so we told that the whole room about Sally, what she was trying to do. Uh, why she had to do it you know it was too big a property and stuff and then we worked the deals to fit her and people focus on the property so much but it's the motivation so the moderator the, it's a moderator's job to get you as many takers as you can as much interest as you can and a lot of times when you're new to these meetings you're saying why are you asking me these questions of where are they from why did they buy this what are they going to do uh, are, are they, you know, why did the partnership not work or, or what have they owned in the past? And that's why we're trying to formulate what they would do to bring you an idea that you may not even, or they may not even have thought of, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's what the goal is to focus on the person, not the property. And that's, that's how, so, so like yours that you had so many assets in there, but you have one, one person. And so you focus on that person and what they're trying to end up with. And, and it makes it a lot easier. It did. Um, and they, when I was done, um, they actually gave me a standing ovation because mm. they really thought that I wasn't going to be able to, that I'd have a deer in the headlight looks, which I thought was hilarious. Um, but at the same time, 
we broke it down. I mean, over several periods, we had multiple, multiple offers. And um, mm -hmm. so there was a really good spread of things to look at and just trying to make that all work. Um, and, so, you know, it has to be somebody that can be creative and look at it and see that opportunity. Not everybody can, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're just thinking, I got to have cash. I have to have cash. Um, right. And that's really not it. Ultimately, you get what you need. It's just a matter of moving all the pieces around. So and sometimes it, you it, have to go backwards to get to where you need. You have to back up, go sidestep, and then to go forward sometimes, you know? Yeah. It was by far the most fun I think I've ever had in real estate. It, you know, just the, the rush of it all, number one, to have to know your stuff that well. And to have everybody coming to you and saying, okay, let's, let's make this work. And just the knowledge, I mean, somebody bringing you paper and you're looking at them like a deer in the headlights. What do you mean? Well, mm -hmm. how does that work? So it's a lot of fun. It really mm -hmm. is. You got to make fun. You got to enjoy what you do in life. You know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, like you saying, you sold over 200 homes in one year. That doesn't sound like fun to me. <laughs> You know, I, I was in residential for a while just in the beginning and, you know, the, the, what colors, the carpet and all that kind of stuff that, you know, that seems complicated to me, but you got to make whatever you do in life, whether it's real estate, whether it's anything, you got to enjoy what you do. I, I, you know, we all have friends that do the nine to five or whatever. They just hate their jobs. They're miserable and it carries over into their personal lives. And you got to make life fun. And this, this, this is like putting a puzzle together. Like you said, it's a big puzzle You're trying to put it together. It's, it's stimulating of the mind. You get to meet people from all over the place and you're having a, a, a tons of fun doing it. Like you mentioned today, you have just finished up with one of these meetings mm -hmm. and you had people from several States and several countries in this zoom meeting. Um, one of the things that I'm working on right now is it's called residential zoom across America, but it will ultimately go international and <laughs> setting up these appointment with these people in different countries, they sell real estate incredibly different than what we do here. Like they, they don't do have, barter. MLS. yeah, they do a lot of barter, uh, and uh, a lot of exchanging. Um, and, uh, yeah, like you said, the MLS here has such a, uh, a hand on everything and, um, I've learned that they understand exchanging better than we do a lot. Right. And when I say exchanging, everybody thinks of 10 through and I'm talking true exchanging. Uh, just, I have what you ha want, you have what I want, that kind of exchanging. And, and it's just interesting, but you know, Orange Coast, uh, you know, we used to meet live. You can see some of the pictures behind us. Uh, COVID forced us to go via Zoom which was probably the blessing in disguise because we just shot, uh, we're now a national meeting and we, we had people from, we had two people from New York this morning. We had Boston, we had Massachusetts, we had Florida, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, uh, Alberta, Canada. Um, a couple, couple of meetings ago, we had Israel, and then we had, you know, some local Northern California, Oregon, Washington. So we're all trying to put together. And now you may think, well, my client doesn't want this and that. Well, you know, does it really matter where the property is as long as it gets them the benefits they're looking for? Mm -hmm. If there's management in place, uh, that kind of stuff. So don't make the don't make the decisions for your client. That's the worst thing you can do. So, um, so yeah, I highly recommend attending these meetings. There's a lot of them all over the place. Orange Coast is one of the few that allows non-licensed principals in the room. Huh. Uh, so, so we feel if you own your own property, you should be able to present it. Um, you know, a lot of, most groups don't allow that, but we do. And uh, we've always have. And so, and we have attorneys that attend as well for services. They barter services uh, all sorts of things. So yeah, it's get involved in your local group. Wichita has a, a, a really good group. Uh, one of my mentors, Paul Winger, uh, senior, he lives there and he's, he's a, a big mentor of mine. And, and there's a lot of good guys in that area, but across the country, you know, and you can find that out through NCE. They have a list of all the local groups. Absolutely. And I, it had it not been for project J Rowe, who is actually out of Wichita, Mm -hmm. NCE is an invitation only. Um, and so I would, 
he brought me along and just said, Hey, you know, you're going to pitch this, you know, it better than I do. I'm not going to pitch it for you. You're going to do it. And I was okay. <laughs> so that's it's how I got to learn. Right. I did. And, you know, like I said, I would do it every day mm-hmm. just for the opportunity to do it. Yeah. So yeah, a yeah. lot of fun, but it, it goes is. to show that there are other ways of doing real estate than just sticking a sign in the yard and hoping that it sells. And, you know, ultimately you can be creative and it does work. Um, the guys were talking about swapping out even art and there was a boa constrictor at one in one deal. I mean, they, well, they it's funny. You just I, uh, <laughs> I just, I just, after the orange coast meeting, I just, uh, uh, I had a, a Da Vinci, uh, horse and rider sculpture, uh, that my dad, uh, worked on a deal and, and we got it and the value is right around 50, 60,000. And I exchanged that for a two acre lot. And so in Georgia, a residential lot, yeah, my brother and sister and I, and my, my dad passed in January. So I had just gotten back 15 minutes before I got on this call going to UPS, taking the sculpture and shipping it to Florida because we're actually doing the deal art for real estate right now and in that in that deal. But I've seen anywhere from uh, uh, medical practices. Uh, we had we had one guy back in the olden days. Uh, there was a doctor that that attended and he got he exchanged. Uh, a, it was a it was a small lot and so forth for a vasectomy. Uh, there was uh, Dr. Jerry Buss, Jerry Buss, uh, owner of the Lakers, used to attend Orange Coast. And, you know, he started the Lakers by bartering. He would he would he had an area at the forum where he would say, OK, uh, there was a printing company. He would exchange box seats for them to print up the 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 you know, the, what are you, the magazines they sell inside the, the you know, the programs. And then he would have other stuff. You know, he'd give seats away for bartering you know marketing and advertising and stuff and he used to come to our meetings all the time too so the world is full of barter and and real estate and and traditional real estate they're doing the same thing they just don't realize that they're doing it right yep yeah but if you're looking for something that's next level this is next level by all means i mean it really is so it's definitely something to look into if you're interested i do think it's really great that you do let you know non-agents and and principals into the meeting that's that's pretty cool yeah you have to have a license in order to represent a client and stuff but if you're a principal if you have a if you have a piece of real estate that you own you know you could present it and stuff you just can't collect a commission and stuff like that but you know your objective there at that point is to look for yourself or you're an investor and you have cash and you want to buy something you know we have a lot of that yeah what better place to be than in the room Absolutely. Right. right. Exactly. So if somebody wanted more information about what you're doing and how you do it and all that good stuff, how would you like for them to get a hold of you? Uh, you could see my email address there on it's Capital Newport, C A P I T A L N E W P O R T at gmail.com. Uh, you could visit uh, Orange Coast web st- website. It's O C Exchange Ors.com, which is O R Exchangers.com. There's National Council of Exchangers that you could attend. You could open up. There's a meeting in a couple of weeks mm-hmm. uh, and, and you could uh, Google that and read about it. And, um, you know, just get involved in your local group. Uh, contact me if you're in any, wherever you are in the world. And I could point you in the direction of where a local group is or start your own group. Mm-hmm. And it could be at a coffee house. It could be a via Zoom. And all you're doing is talking about your residential listings. Just start off that way and then go from there. And, uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, I know you have a future uh, interviews with Chuck Sutherland. Up. A lot of us will attend these just to help them get going, you know, and moderate via Zoom. So just just get, get active. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. If you're looking to buy or sell, invest. If you want, um, I would love to take any properties to NCE or even OCE. Um, anytime. My number is 783. I'm sorry, my number is 785 213 5188. Be happy to help you. And thanks for joining us on Real Estate 101. Thank you, guys.